Wow, the informant that right-wingers were basing all their information on about Hunter Biden has gotten arrested by the FBI for him lying to them. That is hilarious, to be honest. And it shows that now there is honestly no case against Hunter Biden on his, uh, on, uh, what, getting bribes and stuff by Ukraine? Like, this is honestly no surprise either. Last night we brought you the story of the wildly embarrassing bombshell that has blown up the right-wing case against President Joe Biden and his sole surviving son. The special counsel investigating the Bidens, Trump appointed U.S. Attorney David Weiss, has now indicted his own key informant for lying. 43-year-old Alexander Smirnov was arrested Wednesday and charged on two counts for feeding the FBI false information. Smirnov's allegation that Joe and Hunter Biden received $5 million bribes from a Ukrainian company has always been manifestly absurd. And yet, it was the central point of the Republican argument for President Biden's impeachment. Republican politicians and the right-wing media relied on this discredited informant to make their case over and over and over again. What is the right wing going to do now that their sole source of information is all been arrested for lying? I bet they're still going to base all their arguments on this dude's lie. A veteran FBI informant alleging both the president and Hunter Biden each took $5 million dollars in bribes. The details come from an FBI informant who is very trusted. A highly reliable informant that has always checked out all the information he's ever given us has checked out. We uh, have determined that whistleblower is extremely credible. This is a very crucial piece of our investigation. A confidential human source that had been reliable previously to the FBI. A confidential informant that they had on the payroll. Documented allegations of bribery from a trusted FBI confidential human source has now finally been released. Now its contents are devastating. Trust it. Yeah, that's hilarious. So many people were claiming this dude was trusted, reliable. He always checked his facts and everything else. And nope. He was just lying to the FBI, uh, which makes me question how many other informants are just lying to their handlers about various things and people's lives being ruined just for these uh, informants wanting to lie. So trusted, so reliable, highly credible. In fact, in just one year, Sean Hannity, that guy you just saw there, promoted the bogus claims of that so-called trusted informant no less than 85 times on his show. 28 of those segments were Hannity monologues, long ones, on the topic. And of course, it was a joint effort between Fox News and elected... So either these people that was uh, backing this informant were either lying about it all, or they were so stupid and ignorant that they didn't even check if this guy was actually lying or not and just took his word or other people's word that he was a trusted source. Republicans like Texas podcaster Ted Cruz who talked about it ad nauseum on his thrice weekly program called The Big Cushy Chair, whatever it is. So you might think, given the fact that their entire case just fell apart in the most public and embarrassing way imaginable, that at least some of these people would feel they had to address it. Say if you were a Fox News broadcaster who had been repeating what you now know to be a lie to your audience for months. No, of course, they didn't even mention it. As of last night, at least. Fox News, take a look at what they were talking about last night when the story broke on Fox News. I... I mean, it's no surprise that uh, Fox News people, when caught out in their lies, not admit to lying, but just ignore it. That's their uh, typical thing, behavior that they do, um, get caught in a lie and just 
uh, talk about a bunch of different other stories and make up more lies because that's Fox News. It's just a lie machine. All they do is make up lies because that's what their audience wants to hear. A bunch of lies. And welcome to Hannity. And today was an unmitigated disaster for Fulton County DA Fannie Willis. Fannie lines blurred, allowing a county DA to bring charges against a former U.S. president is absurd and destructive. Fannie and the lover boy in the hot seat. The Trump Georgia case falls apart. But remember, this isn't the Fannie and. I mean, it, it doesn't really fall apart. I mean, if in if some way that uh, 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 is unable to um, uh, prosecute the case, she they will just you know uh, put in different people. It's not like Trump and everybody else are going to be able to walk free just because of this, and. Like, what about on Trump's team and the uh, defendant's teams where they have lawyers that are dating or married? So, like, how is that not a conflict of interest as well if supposedly uh, Fani and we uh, having a relationship is somehow a conflict of interest? Loverboy scandal. It's a Biden scandal. We also have to remember that Joe Biden at this point is essentially a vegetable. And another knock on Joe Biden's leaky bucket of a brain. Obama and the CIA caught cooking the books. Brand new bombshells. Just the wow, that music that they used to, uh, you know, that scary bit of music. They they know they know that they're base will get you know hyped up and full of anxiety hearing that especially with you know obama cooking the books the usual charming content across all of fox news primetime last night during this big story there were zero mentions of their favorite fbi informant zero now I think tonight they might get to it once they've gotten their story straight Break it to their audience. The person they've been relying on for over a year with this ludicrous claim wasn't telling the truth, has in fact been arrested for making it up. But, you know, we know this. Fox News is not a journalistic organization. Their purpose is to create an alternate reality for their viewers where they hear only what the conservative movement wants them to hear. We know that. Well, it's also what the audience wants to hear. I mean, uh, the moment uh, Fox News started admitting that... Uh, they were lying about the election being stolen. A lot of the Fox News viewers went to Newsmax and other alternate right wing news sources because they didn't like the fact that uh, Fox News was admitting that the election wasn't stolen. And after uh, Fox News started losing audience members, they started doubling down on the election lies until they got sued by Dominion and Smartmatic. And then they, again, started telling everybody not to say that the election was stolen because that would just be more evidence of defamation against them, which they did lose their cases. Because they paid out the largest media defamation settlement in all of U.S. history to the tune of nearly $800 million create, for creating the alternate reality the election was stolen from Donald Trump, and we know they knew that was false. Yeah. Fox. That's uh, one reason why uh, Tucker Carlson got kicked up. Uh, he was uh, considered the most liable for the uh a defamation suit. I'm talking the most about uh, the election being stolen, and Fox News fired him in order to try to save face. It is hilarious how much money they had to pay out, and it wasn't just the Smartmatic Dominion. There was a guy in South America who sued Fox News over defamation, and they lost as well. Because Fox News knew that their claims of the election being stolen was a lie. 
so there is no way for them to win their cases. And believe me, they saw the news about their number one informant yesterday. They just chose to ignore it. How embarrassing. And here I was thinking Sean Hannity always wants to set the record straight. Again, on this show, we always want to set the record straight.